Here we are, students. The last part of this lecture series focusing on primate ecology and sociobiology, specifically group living. Just like the other components of primate ecology, we want to know the kind of groups that primates form. And we also have a pretty good idea of how and, and why they for, form, and there's a number of different factors that are associated with it. One group living strategy that humans aren't even familiar with in Western culture is monogamy. That means that you mate with only one partner at a time. And you would think of humans here in the United States as serial monogamy, meaning that we have monogamous relationships where we mate with only one partner at a time. But of course, you know, we have things like divorce, we have things like um, a partner passes away. Uh, and so it's, it's uh, humans also pair bond. And so uh, there are some primates that are, you know, serial monogamist, if you will. Um, and there are others that, that may actually pair bond for life. And a good example of a monogamous, uh, you know, group living structure is the white handed gibbon and their lesser ape and they live in parts of South Asia, and you will have a male and female that will mate with one partner, and they will pair bond for life. And this has been a classic example of monogamy um, among primates, although we have discovered that some tarsiers actually are monogamous and will pair bond. Now, some people that have done research on gibbons have noticed that some of the partners will sneak off and actually... Um, have, you know, mate with another partner. And so what does that sound like? It sounds just like humans. Polygamy is the most common group living structure that we actually see among non-human primates. One of them is most common and one of them, at least the type, is the most rare. And when you hear the term polygamy, it just means that one uh, part of one, uh, you know, individual mates with uh, more than one partner. However, the term polygamy does not actually refer to which sex, male or female, actually has more than one partner at a time. And so, uh, you know, the root of this word is poly, and then you have polyandry and polygyny within polygamy. And polyandry means... Um, many males. Andros, root word, means male. And so this is kind of how you, I'm helping you remember it. And so polyandry is where you have one female that mates with uh, two or more males. And the example I give you is, is the emperor Tamarin. Tamarins and marmosets, they live uh, in South America. They're New World monkeys, many of them occupying parts of the trees in the Amazon, uh, Amazonian basin. And the emperor Tamarin female, she will mate with two males. Uh, and often they are not even sure of who is the father of the offspring that she has. She will typically have twins. And when it's time to babysit, those two males will have one child in tow while the, the mother goes off to feed on food or nectar or, or, take, or to take a break. Uh, polygyny. Um, is another uh, group living strategy that is actually the most common. So poly polyandry is the most rare uh, among primates and polygyny is the most, most common, predominant. And this is where you have one male that mates with two or more females. And, you know, the root of that word is obstetrics and gynecology. So poly, many females. Uh, the example we give is the gorilla. And the gorilla... Uh, will, you know, the silverback or the alpha male, it's not a type of gorilla. It's just a gorilla that actually has uh, gray hair because they are the oldest gorilla. They're the, the, the biggest and the strongest. And some male gorillas can live up to 15 years um, or, or, or slightly older. And so this is because the female has to be very choosy about her, her mate. And so what you'll notice among primates, non-human primates, as well as other organisms, 
the alpha male will actually kill babies. And what will happen is we, when you look at male, uh, male hierarchies, it is based on fighting. Who can, um, who can fight and beat up each other, uh, who's the most dominant, as well as which individual can actually create alliances. And so uh, the female has to be choosy because an alpha male, if he finds out that maybe a beta or a hammer male has sired offspring with one of the females, he will kill that baby provided that that baby is actually still feeding on mother's breast milk. Other organisms, not humans, by the way, once they are actually um, breastfeeding, they will not go through the normal menstrual cycle. And so they, they can't sire any offspring. But once you kill one of the babies while they're breastfeeding, then that female will resume her menstrual cycle or estrous cycle. And now she she's, can be fertile and sire more offspring. And so the male uh, will be intent on killing the babies so that he has the best chance of siring new offspring with that female. Now, no female ever wants her baby uh, to be killed and, and they will fight uh, tooth and nail in order to protect their babies. But it does happen and it does happen in other, you know, more ancestral uh, mammals. And so this means that the female has to be choosy about her mate in order for her, her baby to survive into adulthood. And that's why you will see this strategy of polygyny predominate, as well as you can create more offspring over time, much faster. In polyandry, where you have one female that mates with two or more males, you have to wait for every interbirth interval to actually create more offspring. And so polygyny is a much more competitive strategy. And when you see areas where primates are competing for resources, as well as for space, polygyny actually dominates. And it's the most common strategy among primates for those reasons. Here is a really long word, polygynandry. And, um, you know, many of my primate uh, co uh, colleagues and uh, primatologists will just use multi-male, multi-female, and we can use that. It's a pretty common strategy among some of the um, more primitive primates like like lemurs and lorises. This is where you have mating with more than one partner uh, on both sides, males and females. But oftentimes you will see something like a ring-tailed lemur, which is popularized in the Madagascar movies. Uh, the ring-tailed lemur, they will usually roam in a troop or a group of equal males and females. Each individual will have a partner and will sire offspring. They'll have one mating season. Seems very similar to, you know, more primitive ancestral mammals, even more primitive than lemurs and, and lorises. And this also um, prevents a lot of competition. So there's not a lot of uh, display behavior or competition for mates because the sex ratio is effectively the same or even. Another strategy that primatologists mention that's specific for chimpanzees and bonobos is fission fusion. Fission meaning that at times they're separate. Fusion meaning at times they are together. When you look at chimpanzees and bonobos, the males and the females, they actually kind of stick to their own groups. And the times that they are together, fusion are for obvious things like mating, but also uh, things like feeding and, and meal times. So when you look at the chimpanzee, the chimpanzee males, they actually form very strong bonds. And chimpanzee society is oftentimes different de degrees of, of hostility between, uh, within and between communities. Um, females regularly get beaten up. If you want to be uh, alpha chimpanzee, you need to be able to dominate all of the males and all the females and then rival chimp groups typically spend their whole life finding each other, hunting each other down and maybe even killing each other or at least taking resources away from them. And so females are usually kind of on their own and they don't have a lot of time to, to form bonds. They're trying to protect their baby. Uh, they're trying to find resources because chimpanzees are typically 
kind of gobbling and eating everything up, at least the males. Uh, but it's completely opposite when you look at the bonobo. And that's going to be the, the premise of the video that you're going to watch for this next lab is about the bonobo. And what we notice about the bonobo is that it's different from chimpanzees uh, in that the females actually share strong bonds and the males are kind of off um, leading solitary lifestyles and the male actually will get his social status from his mother and he will count on his mother up until uh, even she dies. And it's unmistakable during mealtime and you'll see it You'll see it in the video. Uh, females and males and infants, uh, they will all participating, uh, participate in gathering food. And they'll kind of put it all in the center. And then females and infants will eat first. And the females will be sharing their food with each other, sharing it with their, their infants. And this is the way that they're, they're kind of forming bonds and strengthening them. If any male comes in too early, like acting like they're really hungry, uh, females will form uh, like a rank, a front rank, and prevent that male from coming in and getting the food. And you'll even see maybe his mother shame him for doing that. Um, you also notice that when groups of bonobos encounter each other, they're not, you know, they're not aggressive like chimpanzees. Some of them will, you know, form a rank and say, this is this group and this is the other group. Uh, maybe don't mess with us. But there won't be a lot of intergroup fighting or killing. Sometimes some of these groups of bonobos will merge and they'll roam around for a specific period of time. Um, but they will usually always separate. But you can see that their relations are much more peaceful. The last group I want to talk about uh, is a multi-level society. And this is where you see large groups of primates like the Hamadryas baboon or even, uh, you know, like the olive baboon and other baboons that live in the Ethiopian highlands, they will actually have very large groups. Like some of the baboons that live in the Ethiopian highlands, they can get up to numbers of 500 or 600 in one group. It's a huge group. And inside that group, you will have tiers of polygynous groups where you'll have one male uh, mating with more than one female, and then they will have different ranks. And they will use this hierarchy to, you know, to form uh, different groups as well as alliances, decide where to roam and move for food. And it's a lot like some of the, you know, multi-level societies that you see in, in complex socio-political systems like ours in, in the United States, where you have, you know, different classes of individuals and some of that can be based on social status, it can also be based on access to resource and wealth. And so uh, we actually thought that this was something that you only notice in humans, hierarchies, um, but we see it even in monkeys.